Good morning, everyone. My name is Senior Pastor Dr. Deanna Brevon of Jesus Is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. Today I am bringing you part one to hope for the downcast soul. Hope for the downcast soul. Amen. Amen. Let us open up our Bibles and prepare the Bibles to Psalms chapter 42 verses 1 to 11. Psalms chapter 42 verses 1 to 11. And as you prepare for today's message, I want us to pray today as we listen to our hearts today and as we listen to our inner soul man program that it will be open to the words so that we may feed freely on the message that we are receiving and we will drink from the power of the Holy Spirit amen we welcome this day all of the national and all of the international fellowship members and visitors around the globe you receive I pray as you receive the spiritual nutrition of the Lord's Word today. May the Lord richly bless you around the globe. My name is Senior Pastora, Dr. Diana Brevon. As I shared, let us prepare ourselves and open up your Bibles to Psalms chapter 42, verses 1 to 11. Let us also pray for every leadership of Jesus' Lord Fellowship. Let us pray as well for all of the leaders around the globe. Let us pray for everyone who is spreading the gospel today. Let their words of utterance overflow every soul man program that comes across the living word of God, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray also for all those who are suffering with asthma, allergies. Let us pray for all of us who succeeds and prospers where our soul prospers as we continue to be healed healthy in every direction that we are not given into the robber we arise every day and we go for that next goal within our health amen let us pray for for complete healing bomb of gilead over our minds over our bodies over our souls amen amen and amen let us go into Psalms chapter 42, verses 1 to 11. Psalms chapter 42, verses 1 to 11. And it reads, To the chief musician, Mashin, for the sons of Korah, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitudes. I went with them to the house of God, with the voice of God of the joy and praise and a multitude that kept holy day why art thou cast down O my soul and why art thou disquieted in me hope thou in God for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance O my God my soul is cast down within me therefore will I remember thee from that land of Jordan and of the Hemanites, from the hill Nizar, deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Amen. Over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime and in the night. His song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forsaken me? Why go? I am mourning because of the oppression of the enemy. As with the sword in my bones, 
My enemies reproach me while they say daily unto me, Where is my God? Why art thou cast down on my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. Who is the health of my countenance and my God? Today, through the grace of God, I wanted to share with you, number one, the blessings of this book. The blessings of this book. Amen? Which everyone has to love the Psalms because it's the songs. Amen? There's a great blessing in, in, in being able to hold and read the book that you have in your hand, folks. That you have in your hand. I realize that times have changed here within our lives. And that the Bibles are now available on all sorts of electronic gadgets, devices. But there's nothing like holding a hard copy of the Bible. And through the grace of God, the Lord showed me that. While my home has been renovated and I, I have been staying in the, in the RV for quite some time until, my, uh, until the renovations here are practically complete. Amen. And let me tell you something. There's nothing like that hard copy of this tool that I have in my hand that you could sniff on its antiquity pages. And you could also turn the pages. Oh, there's nothing like it. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this tool, for this living word, for you in the flesh, Father God, which is the living word of God. I heard a preacher once say that it was very disturbing to me just this one time, the way how he shared it. But yet, after hearing him out, I believe what he had to say. I really believe what he had to say. He said that after almost 30 years of preaching, he had discovered that we only get to preach from passages in the Bible only once. <laughs> only once. He meant that because of the time factor that was involved in preaching, that most diligent preachers who want to preach their way through the whole entire Bible will only pass through a particular passage. Why? Because of the shortness of the vapor of life. That's why. And therefore, he pointed out, folks, that it was crucial that we do our, 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 our dead level, our deed level best to pre preach every time with a pure heart. Amen. Pure motives and pure mind. Amen, folks. Pure motive and pure mind. I must confess that when I began to, to, to meditate on what he had said, I again had to make the determination to treat every passage of this book with a sense of sacred honor. Amen. With that sacred honor. I was trying to find his, his old time passages, you know, that, that certain message on a, on, a, on a video and I was unable to. That was back in the day of files. That was back in the day of writings. But I was unable to. So I could at least show you a bit more of an example. Amen. But I must confess. When I began to meditate on what this preacher had said back then. I again had to make that determination to treat every living passage of the Lord's word. With a sense of sacred honor. Amen. The blessings of, the, of, of, of this tool. That many of you call book. I don't call it a book. Because 
John 1.1 1, 1 says the word of God is God. The word of God was God. The word of God shall forever be God. That's why I call it my tools. Everything I have in my library I call tools. I don't call books. Because it is spiritual food to our soul man program. Amen. And the blessings of this tool and of the anointed preaching is that it helps us to move along with the, our Christian walk for the Lord Jesus Christ not for our selfish needs not for our selfish desires for the purpose that the Lord has in store for us within that word amen it encourages us to move forward folks it challenges us to prayer it urges us to worship amen it confronts our sin it helps us to battle the whims of the flesh of our flesh it breathes hope into us when we're under attack amen it opens our eyes to the greatness of God and the power of his salvation it also softens the blows of disappointment folks it molds our minds into the greater plan of God of God with this psalm folks it helps to breathe hope into a downcast soul before before we go into Psalms 42 I gotta tell you I am so how do you call it so fervent when it comes to the living word when it comes to the the 30 days of, of, of Proverbs when it comes to the 150 days of of daily Bible reading of the Psalms these are two books of the word that I instruct my leaders it's a must that must be planted in all of our websites every day because this is a must read this is a must spiritual food or if you want to take this as your spiritual drink as your spiritual dessert go for it but it is a must for you to receive daily amen it is a must also for you to to get deep into the wisdom and knowledge of of the understanding of each chapter so you could deep search and so you could receive the knowledge of what the true meaning is and the true understanding is and and out of the books that you are reading every day it is a true must for you to have the wisdom knowledge and understanding of of through the grace of God of of, of re repeating that scripture over and over and over again the, the scriptures that the Lord stands out within each book amen just continue to to write down those promises at least five to ten times until it prays out of you amen this is a, a, a this is very very imperative I know most of the time I am on my leaders of whoever is posting for the day whether it's uh, Deacon Matthew or whether it's uh, our our precious uh, prayer coordinator uh, Rosemary whoever it is I know I, I, I get firm when it comes to the living Word of God but it's for the Lord's purpose for each of you to receive that that good spiritual nutrition of the Lord's Word amen that's why I don't want you to miss out I never want our fellowship hall doors to close I always want you to receive the living Word of God daily amen and the sermons on Sundays and on midweek amen and special services uh, no matter what day it is amen and for you to receive with us if you're not receiving it with with a fellowship poll or if you would like to receive your 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 offering of of the communion with us on the first Sunday I welcome you to do it with us every first Sunday at the end of the service amen but this tool this living words of Jesus that is planting that you are planting deep in your heart 
this is very imperative for you and for those the Lord has planned for it that's surrounding you. Amen. Psalms 42. Psalms 42. Five books in the Psalms. If you have, if you have one of the search for, for the true truth Bibles, if you have one of the search for the truth Bibles, you're going to notice something here. Something written above the, the Psalms 42. Amen. You're going to note that it has the caption that gives book two. Psalms 42 to 72. Amen. I've been giving this questions in most of my, my uh, websites. Amen. Uh, on my question of the day. But if you have one of the Search for the Truth Bibles, you're going to notice something that's written above Psalms 42. Amen? You're going to note that it has the caption that gives Book 2, Psalms 42 to 72. This psalm that we have just read, it comes at the very beginning of Book 2 of the Psalms. Amen? In fact... There's five books of the Psalms, and the Jews commonly referred to them as the Psalter. As the Psalter. This was what they sang when they came to the worship. This is what they sang when they came to worship. Amen. Where you see this written at the top of the psalm? This is what they sang when they came to worship. The longer that you live for the Lord, folks, the more of these psalms that you're going to discover to be of great value to you. As I shared before. Because as you continue to read these psalms, as you continue to study these psalms, as you continue to, to memorize these psalms, through the grace of God, through the grace of God, in fact, I believe that some of them you will come to treasure. You're going to come to treasure just as I treasure the whole 150 Psalms. Amen. Book one. Book one is Psalms one, two, chapters 41. That's book one of the Psalms. Book one of the Psalms is what? It is chapters one, two, chapters 41 book 2 folks I do pray that you got your memos your notepads or your computers or your telephones wherever you you write down your notes amen because this is very very imperative for your Christian walk amen book 1 is what it is Psalms 1 to 41 book 2 is Psalms 42 to 72 which complete it. And this is my answer to one of the questions that I had asked. Okay. Psalms 42 to 72. Book 2. It was completed 300 years after the first book. Amen. Hezekiah. Hezekiah. He comes along with. And, 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 and is the force behind putting them together. Amen. Now who was the force of putting the Psalms together? Hezekiah. He comes along. And is the force behind. Putting all of these together. Amen. Isn't that amazing folks? Isn't that amazing? You know. It's a really big blessing here. Amen? Amen? Book 3. Book 3. Which is Psalm 73. To Psalms 89. You're going to note here that they are not chronologically in order, but rather by a, by a theological theme here. Amen? Book 4. 
book four. Book four is chapters 90 to chapter 106. Amen. And this section, it focuses on Israel's relapse and recovery in the wilderness. In the wilderness. Book five. Book five it is, is, represents the books 107, book 107, chapter 107 to chapter 150. This is how the Psalms is all broken down into five parts of the living word. Amen. Book five is chapter 107 to chapter 150 which revivals began to take place amen during this time of chapters 107 to 150 revivals began to take place in this segment amen of time as israel returns from their exiles and rebuilds the walls in the temple in Jerusalem. amen ah uh, maschin a mass chill. Amen? The superscription above this psalm above this psalm it notes here to us that it is a mass chill. M-A-S C-H-I-L This means that this is a psalm of instruction. A mass chill. A mass chill is a psalm of instruction amen the instruction to be given is understanding that god can be trusted during the tough times of life amen the other maschin psalms are scattered throughout the whole psalter here amen psalms 32 Psalms 42, Psalms 44, Psalms 45, Psalms 52, Psalms 53, Psalms 54, Psalms 55, Psalm 74, Psalm 78, Psalms 88, Psalms 89, and Psalms 142. These are other Masjid Psalms. Psalms 32 is the instruction given concerning forgiveness. Amen. The author of this psalm is unknown but we can know that it was written for the sons of Korah amen and was it was intended for the director of music the sons of Korah here were Levites who were the descendants of Korah the father of Korah amen which you can also find in first Chron Chronicles chapter 6 22 to 48 you could also find it in in first chronicles chapter 9 verses 17 to 32 you could also find it in second chronicles chapter 20 verse 19 these were the men who produced the music while the tabernacle was in the wilderness folks and after the construction of the temple in Jerusalem. Amen. Um, write down Numbers 26 verse 11. Amen. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? I would like to jump ahead here. To Psalms 42 verse 5. And then I would like to backtrack through the rest of the psalm here. He asked the question, Why art thou 
cast down, O oh my soul. The psalmist, he pours out his soul to God during a time of duress. He discouraged. He is so discouraged. He's downcast. He feels a sense of hopelessness, trying to choke the life out of his soul. Amen? The Hebrew word, that text is shakak. Shakak. Okay, the spelling is S-H-A-H-K-A-K, -A -A which this means to crouch or to bow down. Amen? It's the same word that's used in by, by Job 38, verse 40, to describe a lion in a crouched position, waiting along that trail to, to pray. The psalmist here, He's describing his soul in such a way that it has been bent down by the challenges and difficulties of life. As if a heinous lion has attacked his soul. Amen. He has come into a contact with some very difficult trials here. These trials, they have, been, have seemed to bring even greater agony to him than any that, that he has even faced or imagined, folks. It's a sort of like, I have a wound that needs treatment and some healthcare worker coming along and working with the wound that inflames the wound even much more. Really much more. Burn victims, folks, often experience this, amen? They often experience this through the process of their rehabilitation, amen? And they can have a second or they can have a third degree burn. But that subsequent trips to the whirlpool for something called debridgement, amen? Amen? To something called debridgement, it makes it seem like the pain that has to be endured all over again. Amen? Really all over again. And the psalmist here, he's expressing that kind of pain right here in this psalm. He's expressing that pain and that suffering right here in this psalm. However, he's not the, the, the throes of physical pain. He's not in that throes of physical pain here. But in the clutches of some soul pain. He's in a soul man program pain. The soul pain which hurts even worse than your physical pain. And it seems to linger and there's nothing, nothing on this earth that can seemingly bring relief to that soul man pain. Amen? That soul man program pain folks is drawn out over months. And sometimes even jeers. Amen? A fractured family relationship that has seethed over the years. Amen? A wayward child who seems to mock God and everything that their parents stood for. Okay? The third thing is a nasty divorce battle that has children caught up in the middle of it. And through the grace of God, the saddest part is... I've seen this within families. Amen? Having to contend with difficult people who seems to have it out for you. Amen? The loss of a job that you really were fulfilled by. Amen? The nagging pain of a physical ailment that will just not heal our body. Amen? Or a limiting health condition that has seemingly put you on the sideline. Amen? Financial pressures that never seems to just go away. A wrong pathway that was chosen and now it's taken years to get back to starting to that very starting point. A pastor who has run out of church at no fault but his own. Amen? A saint who made a mistake, but no one will let him forget it. Amen?
someone who made a big drastic mistake but they will never accept him to forget that mistake that he's made amen a feeling that you've been overlooked for a position that you would have excelled at amen and all of those matters that I just shared it can shut down our faith it could shut down our hope and even more it could shut down our determination so that we can become prey to all the matters and all the devices that Satan brings amen the diagnosis of a downcast soul the diagnosis of a cast down soul folks if you're if you were to go to the hospital with some kind of ailment amen you would have to give them that when when they call the chief complaint amen where are you hurting what does the pain feel like does it feel sharp does it feel dull does it feel throbbing how long has it been going on are there things that causes the pain all of these questions folks they're leading up to helping us to get that diagnosis for that condition we'll probably draw some blood maybe take some x-rays amen perhaps do a CT scan or maybe an MRI or an ultrasound and perhaps even a biopsy yeah. we do these particular things just to get a diagnosis so we can treat you so you will get better <laughs> all the way through Psalms 42 folks and the first verse of Psalms 43 there are reasons that we can see into the diagnosis or the causes of a downcast soul of that downcast soul in absence from the house of God amen and in Psalms 42 verses 1 to 2 to the chief musician Maskin for the sons of Korah as the heart panteth after the water brooks so panteth my soul after thee O God my soul thirsteth for God for the living God when shall I come and appear before God when many scholars they feel like this was David describing his time of fleeing from from Jerusalem as he ran from Absalom amen as he ran from Absalom why the despair why the despair folks because he has been separated from the house of the Lord that's why the despair because he has been separated so long from the house of the Lord our God he had been forced to flee from Jerusalem where he regularly worshiped he can no longer lead in the worship as he had in times of past because of that health issue he will have to remind himself to hope in God there are times that you have to to remind yourself to worship folks because David had been forced to leave he literally felt himself to be cut off from the Lord our God his greatest question is when can I go and meet with the Lord my God when one of the causes of a downcast soul it's an absence from the house of God whether many are willing to admit it or not we find great bolstering in our souls and we come to the house of God routinely regularly and actively and I'm talking also about also about coming to the house of God worldwide online if you're unable to get outside and roll outside to go fellowship with others you are fellowshipping with others worldwide here today online amen one of the causes of a downcast soul folks is an absence amen 
whether many are willing to admit it or not. We find great bolstering in our souls when we come to the house of God routinely, regularly, and actively. And I'm talking about every house of God. I'm talking about the house of God when you could leave your home and you could go into a church building or when you are comforted and you are sitting down and you are and you are receiving your church service right there by your telephone by your computer right now with us through this station amen right now every day of the week as you receive the living word of god whether it's the, the word of god through through the word that we provide you every day whether it's through devotion amen one of the causes in a downcast soul is absence is the absence from it amen in luke chapter 10 we find the parable of the good samaritan who brought the wounded man to the inn and the inn it can be pictured as the house of god amen the inn was a place of refreshment for all of those weary travelers the house of God it brings relief to us in this valley of, of our, our tears in the valley of all of our sufferings amen the inn had an owner who attended the the beaten man the house of God has has ministers has pastors has faithful ministers of the Lord's word godly saints who receives weary sinners to help them recover from the injuries of the world and and of the devil amen the inn had a grand table of food in it the house of God brings us the sincere milk of the living word of God and the strong meat of the word amen the inn was a desirable place for lodgers. The house of God is a place that saints long to go to and finds rest for their souls. Our soul folks can very quickly become downcast when we don't even regularly attend the house of worship or even get online and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth and worship with others even online within this ministry and within others amen the psalmist is far from home and therefore he feels very very far from god in any time that we feel that distance from god our soul can become downcast our soul can become downcast folks folks i love you all May the Lord richly bless you, guide you, and protect you today. I pray that today's message was revealed to you, healed to you, was deep within your soul today, and you will walk it throughout the week. I look forward in supplying you with, with the second part, part two of the sermon on this, Nick, on this Wednesday coming, as a matter of fact. Wednesday, I will be continuing this message. Amen. And I wanted to let you know that Jesus is Lord over your life. Do not accept the stealer, killer, and destroyer to back you off. Do not accept the stealer, killer, and destroyer to come even to come against your mind, against your soul, against your body to get inside that word of God. To get you to through the grace of God, uh, focus on the promises every day. To pray the promises every day. To write down the promises every day. Of whatever you feel, whatever you think, whatever you're, 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 you're facing today. To never back down on Jesus Christ. Amen. Just get there. Get closer to him. Do not accept Satan's schemes to come in to steal, to kill, and to destroy your minds. To come in to steal, kill, and destroy your heart or your soul. Amen. My name is Senior Patora, Dr. Diana Bravon of Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International. Where Jesus is Lord. We are a praying ministry, folks. 
We are a life-changing ministry. We are a going ministry and we are a growing ministry. We are a ministry that brings you all the results. Amen. Amen. Uh, come in and receive the living daily devotions every brand new day. Receive the daily Bible readings. We have a lot going on at Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International within all of our, our websites. And I would like to invite you to get in there and receive the living word. Amen. Receive the living word. Receive prayer every day. Amen. Through our, our, our prayer coordinator. Amen. She prays. She put places prayer devotions. She she places prayer there every brand new day just for each and every one of you. Amen. Each and every one of us. Amen. We are a praying ministry. We continue to pray for you even when we don't hear from you. Amen. To years to come. We celebrate a praise for you. So come on back. Update us. Amen. Continue to update us. Uh, we have also uh, Bible studies for everyone that got breath. Everyone is welcome. There's not one person that's not welcome. You're welcome to study the Bible no matter where you're comforted at. Right now we're in the book of Luke. At the end of the year, the studies are from January all the way to December. At the end of each fiscal year, you will receive a certification you will receive a certification. You will receive your GPA grade credits. Amen. For you studying the living word of God. Amen. Just don't forget to send them in. We have some students that they build up their studies. They will, they will study and they will put it in a file. They'll, they'll study like at least five or six weeks of the studies. And they will put it in a file. And they will send me at least five to ten or fifteen as much of their studies that they have been working on and they will send it to me in a, in a in an envelope or they will send it to me through attachment in abundance amen so i want you to be comforted i want you to study at your own pace but never forget that you are not alone we're right here with you we're right here for you and I will work with you. Uh, my staff will work with you. And others will work with you for whatever questions that you may have. Amen. Maybe that's the purpose why that, that uh, many of you f uh, have not studied yet. Because you feel that you're alone. No. And also I recommend and I encourage you to get into your commentaries. To get into your Bible dictionaries. Amen. Uh, to get into a good Bible filled study Bible. This is what my recommendations are. If you want to understand the Lord Jesus Christ, if you want to understand the living word, you need to start moving more fervently your heart. Amen. And you need to start grasping, grasping that word. Even the, my, my, my daily devotions of the daily ponderings or or through the grace of God, the good mornings. Amen. My set example is, if through the grace of God, you need to get back to it tomorrow, or for a whole week, or for a whole month, go back to it. Let the Holy Spirit just, just rain down upon your heart. Let the Holy Spirit just speak through to you. Believe me, you're going to receive in abundance every wisdom, every knowledge, and you're going to receive the, the living word that the Lord had in store for you over that word all the time. Amen. My name is Senior Pastora Dr. Diana Bravon of Jesus is Lord Fellowship Worldwide International, where Jesus is Lord.